Time to go see the doctor. Oh, hello, doctor. How are you? No, 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 not that one. So a new movie trailer was released recently, which includes a new version of a character that was close to many of our childhoods. A character that was depicted in an interesting way, with some uh, strong use of creative freedom. The phrase blue CGI abomination comes to mind. Oh, oh god, no, not that. Yep, that's the one. So yeah, the new movie looks a little funny based on the previews. I'm not sure if it's going to be any good or not, but in honor of the animated classic, I decided to take a look at Aladdin for the Super Nintendo. Why not the Genesis version? Because this is the one that I grew up with. So deal with it. So fun fact, while the Sega Genesis Aladdin game was developed by a company called Virgin Games, the Super Nintendo one was done by Capcom. Which isn't too surprising if you know their history developing Disney games in the late 80s and 90s. If you booted up a game back then and was greeted with that beautiful old Capcom logo and sound, then you knew you were probably in for a treat. The game opens with the intro story to Aladdin, which follows the movie pretty much to a T. The evil sorcerer Jafar and his parrot sidekick Iago find the golden scarab, which is the key to opening the Cave of Wonders, where a coveted magic lamp lies. However, the thief he sends in to retrieve the lamp turns out to be not worthy, leaving Jafar to seek out the one special person who can enter the cave. And with that, we're taken to a silent and subtle menu screen. One thing I find interesting about this is that if you wait long enough, you'll see a demo of the gameplay, which is common for games like this. But if you hit start during the demo, it plays a smaller opening scene of Abu simply releasing the genie from his lamp, cutting to a much more lively main screen. It's almost like two people working on the game couldn't agree on whose menu screen to use, so they just put both of them in. When you start, the game puts you right into the action, literally with Aladdin making his way through the Agrabah market, while palace guards chase after him. Just an average day for a street rat. The controls feel a little slippery at times, but overall work pretty well. You can dash, jump, bounce off certain objects and enemies, and basically parkour your way around the level, which feels pretty satisfying. Along the way, you find apples which can be thrown to stun enemies, or even kill weaker ones. If you manage to find the cloth item, then you're able to glide around, which increases your mobility even more. In terms of collectibles, you have gems scattered around each level. The red ones are worth three and have their own collecting goal that is tallied throughout the game. Interestingly, if you reach 100 gems, then you're granted an extra hit of damage, rather than an extra life like most games would. This is probably because extra lives are already pretty easy to find on their own, though extra hearts can also be discovered. You can also heal with the occasional food item. Bread restores one heart, and the roast chicken recovers you completely. These are important, since your hearts do not refill in between levels. The last item you'll really need to worry about is the golden scarab, which you're given one chance to grab in each area. This unlocks a roulette wheel chance game that can earn you health, lives, and continues. With how generous the game is, it's honestly pretty hard to get a game over. But if you do, or maybe you're just continuing from a previous session, you can use passwords that are given between levels in order to jump back to where you were. It's a simple system too, which makes it very easy to remember, especially helpful if you're a kid. The first level does a good job of easing your way into the gameplay, and is split into several sections which increase in difficulty as you go on. Stationary sticks and pots let you practice the bounce move safely. Plenty of ledges encourage you to explore the level vertically for possible secrets or alternate paths, and poles allow you to figure out the swinging mechanic. Enemies include arrow guards, brutes, snakes, and chickens stuck in vases. All of these are pretty easy to avoid, yet still establish a threat if you play sloppily, which is a nice balance for an opening level. As you continue on, the enemies are placed in trickier locations, and you're given pitfall hazards to avoid as well, all the while seeing nice changes to the backgrounds, including this cool panning perspective of the palace and the city beneath it. Eventually you reach a boss fight, in the form of the apple salesman who tries to punish the disguised Princess Jasmine for stealing fruit for poor kids in the film. I don't recall Aladdin physically fighting with him there, but hey, I'm not gonna turn down a boss fight. 
It's pretty standard. Watch out for his slashing attacks and bounce off his head when he's open. During the fight, Abu does a goofy little boxing animation, which is a nice detail. I'm not sure if it's the level's setting, but it reminds me of something humorous you'd see from Metal Slug. After this, we get a cutscene of Aladdin taking Jasmine to his rooftop hideout where they chat. Abu, buddy, are you, are you doing okay there? You, you don't look too good. Unfortunately, this happy moment is cut short as the palace guards take Jasmine back to the Sultan and throw Aladdin in the dungeon. Luckily, a strange old man offers to free him in exchange for a favor. Of course, this is actually Jafar in disguise getting Aladdin to help him find the lamp. I never really understood this. Why does Jafar need to hide his identity? It's not like Aladdin knew who he was, and even if he did, it wasn't public knowledge that he was up to no good. Sure, this works out later when Aladdin doesn't recognize Jafar at the palace, but since Jafar planned on killing Aladdin anyway, and I'm nitpicking a children's movie from 1992. Yeah, never mind. The next level is the Cave of Wonders, where Aladdin is to find the magic lamp, but is forbidden to touch any other treasures. This time, your task was swinging on stalagmites, using levers to open paths for the log ride, and avoiding spikes. I'm honestly surprised that the spikes don't kill you instantly considering Capcom's track record for that. You're also introduced to new enemies such as bats and scorpions. Oh, and undead sword-wielding skeletons. And swords. I like how Abu points to where you should go, just in case you thought it led to a pit or something. I'm glad that they added in the gold room. It looks pretty neat, and it even includes their meeting with the magic carpet. Just don't touch anything. Eventually you reach the lamp, and of course Abu has to get his grubby little mitts on something so the cave starts freaking out and collapsing. Next is an auto-scrolling segment as you try to escape, complete with boiling lava and fireballs. It looks more intimidating than it is. Just make sure you don't kill yourself trying to collect all the red gems. Your great escape concludes with an epic carpet ride through sharp cave passages, falling rocks, and a wave of lava following close behind. I remember this part being really intense as a kid and taking a lot of effort to pass it, but it's actually not that crazy playing it now. It's pretty short. Aladdin and crew barely escape, but Jafar ends up grabbing the lamp and sealing them back into the cave anyway. Luckily Abu stole the magic item back at the last second, and they didn't make any images for this scene for some reason. Ran out of budget? Anyway, Aladdin rubs the lamp and out comes that classic j- No. No. No, 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 no. Not that one. So this is that part of the movie where Robin Williams sings that great genie song and tells Aladdin all the stuff he can ask for with his three wishes. But instead of that, here Aladdin gets taken to Genie World. Eh, yeah, sure, why not? And we do get an awesome SNES rendition of the Friend Like Me song as we play through. This level is complete madness. I'm not even sure how else to describe it. It just gets stranger and stranger as you jump through the level's various platforms, most of which are comprised of genie heads. These balloon genies are actually pretty clever, since you can both swing from the handle beneath them or bounce off the top popping them. This level is where the game really starts testing how well you've got the mechanics down. There's tons of death pits and little room for jumping error. I have to admit that this is where I first really noticed that the controls weren't quite as tight as they could have been, mostly with Aladdin's momentum causing him to slip off platforms after landing sometimes. Imagine if you never found that cloth on the first stage. That would make things even harder. I find it funny how Genie's jaw drops in absolute shock when you drop to your death. Dude, you're the one who put me here. You didn't have to do this. Eventually, Genie helps Aladdin escape the cave, and then Abu gets lost in an ancient pyramid? Huh, I don't remember that from the movie. Oh well, new level. So yeah, while all the other levels in the game are based around events that actually happen in the movie, this one is entirely exclusive to the game. I'm not sure if they just decided to add another level at the last minute because they didn't think the game was long enough, or maybe someone at Capcom just really likes pyramids. Though I did notice some palette swapping in this section, such as with the bats and also the arrow guys from the marketplace. That being said, it does also contain unique assets, platforms, and hazards as well. It's a decent addition overall. Oh, and I can't forget to mention the big boss you fight at the end of it. Perhaps the most difficult boss in gaming his- No, it's just Abu, wearing a pharaoh mask. I thought it was funny. After this non-canonical experience, Aladdin wishes to be a prince before visiting Princess Jasmine, taking her onto his flying carpet in an attempt to woo her. And here's something you probably wouldn't have guessed. You actually get to play the whole New World song segment. 
It's more of a bonus level since you can't actually lose, and you just fly around collecting gems, but it's a nice addition. They put plenty of detail in the level sprites, and I like being able to fly between buildings in the background and foreground. Oh, and there's fireworks too. Nice. After this, a lot happens in the story. Jafar's pet hench parrot steals the lamp from Aladdin, Jafar wishes to become Sultan, and then wishes to become the most powerful sorcerer in the world, and then Aladdin and Abu get sent to Canada, but they find the carpet who flies him all the way back to the palace so Aladdin can stop Jafar and save Jasmine. That's, that's about it. Here you have the final level, which takes place at Jafar's corrupted version of the Sultan's palace. There's henchmen everywhere of every variety, tons of floating platforms and stage hazards, a fire room that just fills with fire on occasion for some reason, and even Iago makes an appearance whose weapon of choice is dropping skulls. It's a little morbid. It's definitely one of the harder levels in the game, but I think the genie segment takes a bit more skill to survive. Which is kind of messed up of genie if you think about it. Alright, here it is. Aladdin finally faces off with Jafar. The wicked sorcerer spends most of the fight hovering above you and cycling through three random attacks. He'll either summon a bunch of chicken pots, throw his scepter down which unleashes lightning across the floor, or he'll summon a few bolts of lightning from above. Other than that, he occasionally swoops down towards you. I'll admit, the first time playing through this in many years, it actually took me a bit to get used to the timing of this fight, especially for the seemingly random lightning strikes. But challenge is always good for a final boss fight. Except that this isn't the final boss fight. That's right, just like in the movie, Jafar transforms into a giant snake. You actually fight on top of Snake Jafar himself, jumping at the appropriate time when he waves his body up and down and avoiding the eggs that he spits out. Your target here is his big cobra head, which once again is damaged by the bounce attack. Strangely enough, I explicitly remember being able to damage Snake Jafar with apples when I was little. I remember being surprised that they worked on the final boss since they mostly just stunned other enemies. Yet that doesn't seem to be the case here. Does anyone else remember this? Like, is this one of those Mandela effects? Or am I just crazy? Regardless, get the timing down on your jumps and the final boss shouldn't be too difficult to put down. After this, we get that classic ending scene. Aladdin tricks the power-hungry Jafar into wishing himself to be a genie, imprisoning the evil wizard inside of a lamp of his own indefinitely. After the palace is returned to normal, Aladdin decides to use his final wish to grant Genie his freedom. And the Sultan decides to ignore that old law that says that the princess can only bewed royalty, allowing Aladdin and Jasmine to get married. And with that, we have our happy ending as we enjoy the credit music. Which, speaking of, Japanese developers always have the weirdest credit nicknames. Salaryman? Tall Knob? Oh, and who can forget Linda? So, how does Aladdin for Super Nintendo compare to when I was a kid? Honestly, I think it's still a fun little game. The controls may feel a little loose on harder sections, but overall they work pretty well. The sprite art is nice and detailed, even though the cutscenes can be sparse at times. And though the soundtrack only has two songs from the movie, their 16-bit renditions are great, and the unique music in the rest of the game fits just fine. Everything has that Capcom polish. It's pretty short for a Super Nintendo game and can probably be completed in less than an hour, but it's fun for what it is. It's a childhood game that I wasn't disappointed to revisit. And what more could I ask for? Well that was Aladdin for the Super Nintendo. You know, I noticed that a lot of the games that I revisit in my reviews happen to be Super Nintendo games. I guess that's the console that I grew up on. Anyway, Aladdin was pretty fun. It's pretty much what I remembered from my youth. Uh, Super Nintendo, good console. Just came out recently, I, I recommend you guys pick it up. Pick up one for yourself. Yeah, that was my review. Thanks for watching my video. I'll catch you guys next time.